Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. So it is a new week and I just want to say today is Tuesday and yesterday I was off, yesterday was Monday, I had the day off, I had the dentist which I hate. Does anyone else here hate the dentist? Is it just me? Do I, oh, it really terrifies me. I hate going. I'm the worst patient ever. Actually, this is what I've bought. I just bought this at the weekend. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you will have seen these already because I've already posted them on my Instagram story and things, but I've bought these. The little um, pulse point roller balls try saying that when you're drunk pulse boy pulse point i can't say it now <laughs> i said it right the first time just leave it at that okay so total de-stress mind clear and inner harmony so these are natural oils aromatherapy oils that you rub on your pulse points and that's supposed to help relax and calm you down and i did actually use them yesterday when i went to the dentist i thought i need to try these out so i did use it when i was at the dentist and to be fair I felt, I did feel a bit calmer than normal, but whether it's just a coincidence, I don't know. But anyway, I've bought those ready for the exam. You know, we've, I've got this big exam in April and I am dreading it and I'm really stressed and I'm dreaming about it already and it's not even April yet. So I have got some detox and unwind. I'm going to do some meditation. I'm going to relax. Actually, I am going to do, I think I'm going to do a separate vlog on exam stress and things like that because it is a big one and I understand completely if you struggle with that, I do too. So I think it would be nice to do some tips on that, a separate vlog and save you for listening to it all in this one vlog so it's not a sort of a mishmash vlog. Does that make sense? I don't know. Anyway, talking rubbish now. So yesterday was Monday. Well, in the evening, when I got back from the dentist, I decided to be a little bit proactive, a little bit, some might call weird, but I am a little bit weird sometimes um, because I like to do things extra and give myself more work to do and do things that I don't really need to do right now. I don't know why, I don't know why I do this. But anyway, as some of you may know, if you don't know this, this might be a new information to you, but when we are qualified nurses, it is a requirement of the NMC every three years, you have to complete a revalidation. And part of that three years, you have to log, do a continuing professional development CPD log of 35 hours of extra training that you've gone to. So all of your like manual handling, basic life support, any extra training, any online training, any courses you do, anything extra you do to help keep your skills up to date and keep your knowledge up to date, your whole policies, procedures, guidelines, everything up to date, every extra course that you do, even tweet chats now are included. I know, social media included in CPD, what? Even that is included in CPD now. So you have to do 35 hours and prove that you're doing things to update your knowledge and keep on, on the ball basically. As well as that, you have to write five reflections and you have to do so many hours, things like that. So last night I decided, even though I'm not a qualified nurse, I'm a student nurse, I thought I'm gonna give CPD a go. And online, I'll put the link below, online there is an NMC template for you to do your CPD hours and keep a log. So I sat and I did that last night. I managed to do 41 hours on my log. And that's not even including everything that I've done over the last three years. That's just literally whatever I could find and remember, because this is the struggle. If you're not keeping track of what you're doing, what training you've attended, what dates, times, you know, you need specifics with everything. If you don't keep track of that, you're gonna find yourself going back through your calendar, your timetable to try and find what you've done, when you've done it, what it was, what it involved, what it relates to. And that is something I'm reflecting on right now because it took me a couple of hours scrolling through my timetable and through my pro portfolio online. So I think going forward into the future, I'm gonna keep a diary completely separate. Actually, I've got 101 notebooks in my cupboard that I don't use because I'm addicted to buying notebooks that have really nice quotes and things on because who doesn't do that? So I've got loads of them. And um, so now I'm gonna use one and every single time I do something, I'm gonna log it 
in this book so when it comes to actually revalidating I can just look and be like there you go I've got the date I've got the time I've got what I did what it relates to boom Bob's your uncle two seconds this is gonna take <laughs> actually that's not too bad it's not as hard as I thought it would be the only hard task is trying to remember everything that you've done and trying to put it onto a log but I think if you keep on the ball with this in a notebook or something like that it's going to be easy to revalidate every three years I think I thought if I if I get one now so that when I start applying for jobs it's going to go in my favor hopefully because I don't think many student nurses actually do this I don't think people log all of the CPD and what they're doing so if you are a student nurse out there you're not doing this download the template and start logging everything because when you come to that interview take it with you and show that you're actively already doing it and I think that's going to give you the brownie points I think fingers crossed that's what I'm thinking <laughs> So yeah, sorry, I've actually talked about that forever. I'm really sorry. I'm gonna try and cut that down because I've spoke for about 20 minutes, I think, just on that. So today we had policy and politics. I feel like I'm just rambling on each week. Like I'm saying the same thing, policy and politics, blah, blah, blah. but today it was all about short staffages, which is what I'm actually doing my assignment on, which is really good. And you know what? Actually, everything they were talking about today in the lecture, I was like, I've already got that in my assignment. I've got this in my assignment. I've got, yes, so I think. I'm hitting the money with my assignment, which is a really good sign. I did pick up two points from today's session that I thought, oh, maybe I should look into that and just link it into my assignment somewhere. So I've made a note of those links and I'm gonna have a look. But so far, so good. Tomorrow is, Wednesdays is always an all day session for us. So it's nine till five, busyology. Come on, Betty, I'm ready for you. As you all heard last week, Betty was being troublesome and no doubt she's gonna be troublesome tomorrow for us. So um, I'm looking forward to learning a bit more about Betty and her condition and how to manage her condition and how we can save Betty's life. So yeah, so to, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I love the physiology sessions. Even if I don't understand it, I really, really love the physiology and it's really good to build your knowledge. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. That's it from me for now and I shall see you tomorrow. So today's Thursday. Yesterday we had lectures nine till five all day, physiology, our Betty. It was the last of, last of the sessions of Betty and tomorrow we actually move on to our new case study. So yesterday was a really long day. By the time I got home, by the time I ate, I was exhausted and I fell asleep. So yeah, I didn't have a chance to vlog it. So today I'm just gonna run through a few more things that we did on Betty. So yesterday's sessions involved what we were gonna monitor on Betty, what we were, prioritizing the safety wise a b c d e structure what we're going to prioritize and um, how we're going to monitor it how we're going to do it and the rationale why we're going to do that the physiology behind it all and then we went into the interventions as well so okay so we know what's wrong with betty we don't want it to get worse what we're going to do about it so what we were going to give betty iv wise um, cannulas catheters all of that jazz ecgs so we had to rationalize those interventions as well explain exactly why we were doing it and then to round the day off after all of that after the monitoring after the interventions we went into discharging so we're going to discharge betty because she appears fine and what we want to make sure is is she fine to be discharged so then we looked again at a set of observations which at a first glance you think actually yeah that's much better her blood pressure's come up her heart rate's decreased so it, it's in range now her respiratory rate's in range everything's great but then as you go down the list it's like okay the blood glucose now has gone from 10 to 4.5 her urine, she's got oliguria, I can't say the word, really sorry, I'll put it below, spelt, <laughs> oliguria, which means a really, really minimal urine output. So she's still not right. Her blood gases have come back and they're, although they're in range, they're at the lower range or they're at the higher range. So we're trying to monitor those and we're looking and we're thinking, should she be discharged yet? I'm not sure. Um, so that was really really interesting that was our betty she's finally gone she's discharged yay <laughs> she'll be back i know it <laughs> probably in the exam i'm hoping not but yeah so betty's gone and tomorrow we have got our new case study which is mary who's got a neurological injury i have no idea what yet what's happened to her we're gonna get it tomorrow tomorrow's the launch fingers crossed it's gonna be a good one i'm gonna understand it please 
so yeah so hopefully it's going to be good so today today's thursday i just said this at the start um today we had our cardiology skill session let me tell you for the past two years of my nursing career journey university life whatever you want to call it um i i see ecgs all of the time I look at them and I think it's just a squiggly line. I've got no idea what that means. Um, ECGs is something I do not understand and something I've never understood. Even when people on the wards and things have explained it to me, I'm just like, it's gone over my head. Cardiology is not my speciality. I'm sorry, it really isn't. Um, but today we had an ECG skill session and we had an amazing guy come in who's over, who's, who works in cardiology. So his knowledge is like, Bing, amazing and he was really really educational and he was teaching us and I was thinking wow some of these words I don't understand but you know what wow you're really knowledgeable um, but as he explained and he made it really simple for us uh, things did make sense and I was thinking okay so actually when I look at an ECG okay I might not know what the condition is or anything because I'm still trying to grasp that part of it but I can look at an ECG and go that looks kind of normal <laughs> So yeah, so I can kind of roughly see if it's normal or not. I think, oh, I'm gonna have to get training and I think I'm gonna look at some YouTube videos and some online guides that's gonna help me with ECGs because even after that two hour session of ECG training, I'm still like, I still, I couldn't tell you what the problem is. You're looking at sort of the rhythm, if it's regular, things like that but there's different types and there's different widths and there's different lengths and there's different everything. And it, it was just like, pfft, my mind has blown. So yeah, so I'm probably never gonna be a cardiology nurse, but I do know how to put on the leads, set up an ECG, I can do an ECG, I know how to set it up, I know how to comfort the patient, I know how to get the readings, I know how to do all of that. It's just the interpretation that I'm really struggling with and understanding the P, Q, R, S and the T, the other three points oh, I haven't got a clue so roughly from what I understand today is the P value so you've got your line you've got your squiggly bit the first squiggly bit is the P which is just telling you what's happening in the SA node of the heart which is the the main electrical conductor of the heart then the QRS value is the middle one, it's usually the long sort of one. That is the QRS, and that's telling you what's going in the AV. So it'll go, f the electrical impulse will go from the SA node to the AV node, and that's gonna tell you what's happening in the AV node, if, it, if there's a block or something like that, complete block, partial block. And then in the T value, that's going into the fibers of the heart, you know, so it goes SA node, AV node, down the fibers and spreads out. And the T part tells you about that part. But looking at it and seeing the widths and the lengths and if it's just dropping down, if it's up, if it's... No, no, no idea. That's as much as I've got, guys, I'm sorry. That's all I'm gonna teach you from today's session. <laughs> But I do have some really good pictures that I took from the session, um, some really good photos of examples of what things mean and things like that. So I'm gonna show you a whole reel of them now. Have a look at them, screenshot them, save them, see if you can see what I can't see. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's only one I recognized, which was the arterial fibrillation one. Um, I looked at it and I was like, mm, arterial fibrillation? <laughs> good guess, Claire. And luckily it was right. So yeah. Oh, in the flat line, obviously, which is um, a systole. A systole is flat line. Patient, no, no electrical impulse at all, flat line. So there, I know too. Go me. So I, I really, if you are really good with ECGs, if you're good at cardiology, let me know. I'm struggling. Tell me. Come on, tell me, explain it to me in layman's terms so I understand. So that's it. So I had a really good session today and I've talked to you for way, way too long about this. So I'm really sorry. I probably should have done a whole separate vlogs on ECGs probably, but here it is. So tomorrow we do have our case study. I will let you know how that goes, whether I'm gonna like Mary or not, who knows? Is she gonna be as dramatic as Betty? Who knows? But next week, next Thursday, next Sunday when I tell you all, we will know what two case studies we're gonna have in the exam, and then I can start really solidly, solid, solid revising. 
and then you can revise with me. I'll do some revision sessions, which I keep saying I'm gonna do some revision um, vlogs. So I'm gonna do that when I start my real revising. My real flashcards are gonna be on point, hopefully. Smash this exam, fingers crossed. So I'll see you all tomorrow. So today is Saturday. Yesterday we had our launch of our new case study and let me tell you, remember where at the start when I was struggling with Phil and I said I wanted anybody but Phil? Give me Phil. Do you know what? Give me Phil. Oh my God, this case study. Oh, it was a two hour lecture. Our case study's Mary. She's got a subdura hematoma and, or hematoma. And, oh, which I understand. I understand what that is. But then when it goes into the more in-depth things, because they were talking about intracranial pressure and then they were talking about calculations, so maths equations of how to work out the mean arterial pressure and taking away the, oh God, I can't even remember, the CPP, um, the cranial pressure um, to get an overall, an overall number of some sort. <laughs> my god i'm even struggling to tell you guys so basically how you calculate the mean arterial pressure is you take the systolic pressure take away the diastolic divide that by three and then plus the diastolic i know my mind's blown please don't worry about this so yeah so once you've got the mean arterial pressure you take away the intracranial pressure and you've got that number they give you the number to take it away so you don't have to work out that part but you have to work out the blood pressure part and then you take away the cranial pressure and then that'll give you an overall pressure number and if it's lower it means there's an ischemic problem can't remember there's an ischemic problem if it's too high there's something else and all these different numbers and these maths equations is just blown my mind and I really really don't like Mary sorry Mary so just for everybody's information this is not a real patient I would never say that about a patient this is a case study patient but oh no she this this lecture every single student in that room was just like like this really blank expression and we were all like we literally have no idea what you've just said to us we have no idea what you've just told us and he had to run through it a few times for us to understand and we were all still like we give up <laughs> we give up <laughs> going back to work in a hotel <laughs> i'm joking i'm really not but oh god it was so so tough it was the hardest lecture so far and i thought phil was hard i really wanted to cry after that lecture and i just thought Do you know what i'm gonna fail if i've got mary actually if i've got a choice of mary or betty and I've got to do one of them, I'm probably going to fail this exam because the only one I can confidently say I can do is Arthur, who had COPD, and I really enjoyed that. I understood it, I got it, I fully understood it. Then they throw this at us. So yeah, so I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm going to keep some optimism because this is how we felt at the start of Phil. So by the end of Mary's case study next week, next Thursday, so next Sunday you guys will find out what we've got please pray for me guys pray it's Arthur pray for Arthur pray for Arthur come on Arthur so next week is the end of Mary so they're cramming all of these lectures back to back and then we've got two weeks of of free time where we can revise there's only a couple of sessions I think there's a Wednesday and a Thursday over the whole two weeks that we've got to go into university so we've got those two weeks free to get on it revise before our placement starts at the end of March oh my god my placement starts at the end of March Oh, <laughs> guys, my placement starts in like three weeks. Three weeks? Should I ring them? Oh my God. No, it's too soon. To I'll ring them next week. I'll ring my placement next week and get my hours. Oh my God. I'm not panicking. I'm calm. It's fine. This exam's going to be great. But yeah, so overall, I can't even explain to you what that lecture was. I'm really sorry because I still don't understand it. I'm going to have to revisit the PowerPoints. I'm going to do a lot of Google, a lot of Khan Academy to work out what I've just been told. I'm really scared for this exam now. I was feeling confident. Now I'm scared. I'm praying that one of the choices is Arthur and I'm praying the lecturers are going to be kind to me or well, us. There's no point. I erase it there's no point in stressing right now because the exam's not here 
I can't change anything. I, there's nothing I can do. It's out of my control. I just need to be the best I can be, revise and know the stuff for the exam so that I don't fail. Got this. Come on, change it around. So today's Saturday. <laughs> um, today we've got our HARS launch, which I'm going to go and do and hopefully see some new students who are going to sign up to HARS and take part in all of the workshops that HARS provides. If you don't know what HARS is, I'll put the link below so you can have a look at my vlogs that I did about HARS. And yeah, so that's that. Tomorrow I am off all day, which I'm now probably going to revise because I've panicked myself. So I'm probably going to revise tomorrow, guys. I will spend the morning. I'm going to have a lie-in. I'm going to have breakfast in bed. I'm going to chill out and then I'm going to revise in the afternoon. I'm going to 50-50. You've got to balance these things. Work-life balance. So yeah, so fingers crossed for me, guys. We can do this. Fingers crossed next week we've got some good news. There should be a smile on my face in that vlog. Fingers crossed. So thank you as ever for watching. I'm going to wrap this up because this vlog's been way too long. And I shall see you all next week. Have a great week, guys. Have a great Sunday. Pray for me. Pray for you if you've got exams and placements coming up and you're stressing. Let me know. Let's stress together and help each other out. So yeah, I'll see you all next week, guys. Have a great week. Shutterstock Music. Shutterstock Music. Shut up.